Hey guys, back with another video. This time what we're going to do is we're going to talk about a fight that I see a lot of people debating uh, over the defensive reaction of the guy who ultimately got finished, okay? So obviously, as you can see on your screen, this is Ryan Hall versus BJ Penn. There's a ton of discussion about this fight, and, uh, uh, you know, for good reason. It, the, the finish we saw in this fight was from a backside 50-50. Okay, the backside 50-50 has emerged as one of the overall strongest variations of Ashigurami for a couple of reasons, which we're going to talk about in this video. Uh, the first part is going to include a sample from my leg lock defense instructional, where I'm going to talk about basically backside 50-50 defense, generally speaking. And then after that, you can come back and uh, we'll talk about this fight specifically and a couple other fights to uh, uh, fights and matches, jujitsu matches, that is, to like shed light on what happened. Okay, so now we're gonna look at what is basically the worst 50-50 uh, position to be in from the perspective of the defensive man, okay? It's gonna be a backside 50-50. This stands in contrast to a double-seated 50-50 in that it's not symmetrical anymore, right? It's now an asymmetrical position where the offensive man has basically all the advantages and I have uh, really none of them, okay? That's not to say there aren't defensive resources at our disposal still. So there's less than in the double seated 50-50, but there are things we can do to mitigate the threat of the uh, of the heel hook and, and get out of the situation. Okay, so let's first have a look at the position and explain why it's such a strong position. Okay, so we start from a bottom 50-50. We're just gonna do a basic entry into the position where I spin under and I'm able to expose the heel. Uh, turn this way. Okay, so here, we're in a backside 50-50 situation and we're able to expose the heel. The backside 50-50 is a variation of Ashigurami where the knee is the potential point of contact with the floor. Whenever we're dealing with an Ashigurami uh, with the leg on the inside, for instance, such as like a cross Ashi, um, we are uh, either going to be in a situation where the knee or the heel is the potential point of contact with the floor, right? People are going to spin to escape and things such as that. That's going to either mean the heel or the knee is the potential point of contact with the floor. And that's going to change how we play the position. Whenever the knee is the potential point of contact with the floor, the principal mechanic we use to force heel exposure is going to be pressure to the back of his knee. Okay, and the backside 50-50 is especially well suited to apply that sort of pressure. Okay, now if I had a, uh, just pick your knee up. If I had a backside cross Hashi and I had heel exposure, this is very good to put pressure to the back of his knee because I've already got heel exposure. But if I don't have heel exposure, I don't really have any mechanic that's gonna enable me to force this knee to bend, right? He can extend his leg. There's nothing I can really do to stop that. Okay, I can't, like, I can turn my hips down this way, but really extend your leg he's gonna win that battle, okay? And as a result, extend your leg, hide the heel. It's gonna be very hard to expose his heel, okay? Whereas if I put my foot to the front of his far hip in this backside 50-50, now here, when he goes to extend this leg, it stops at a certain point. My foot is able to hook around the front of his far hip and extend, making his leg, uh, keeps it in this bent position, all right? I would also always be grabbing the front of the knee with his hand so he can't just like pull the knee out, right? Pull the knee up. Yeah, like just straight that way, Pete. Good. All right, now come back. All right, so here, when he goes to extend this, it can't because it hits my leg. All right, now um, there are two main variations of backside 50 50 where the leg is either going to be on the bottom side. This will happen a lot when we enter from a K guard, okay? If the leg is on the bottom side, this is definitely to our advantage as the defensive man, okay? Because what I'm going to have to do as the offensive man is I'm going to have to take the leg and pass it to the top side and then expose the heel, all right? Whereas if I end up here and the heel's already on the top side, I can catch it right away, all right? This window where I take the leg and I go to pass it to the top is very valuable to the defensive man, as we're, uh, we're going to see in a bit, all right? Now, there's basically two directions he can go, all right? He can either, don't do this yet, he can either spin this way or he can back step this way. <clears throat> now, if I have a heel hook in place and he goes to spin this way, what's gonna happen is 
Yes, he is going to relieve pressure from the lock momentarily, but if, if I'm good, so go to spin this way. Yeah, good. What's going to happen is I'm going to throw my legs to the other side of his body, right? Which, if we remember from the double seated 50 50 section, is pretty bad because now he doesn't really have any ability to come forward and hand fight, okay? So, come back. So, um, when he rolls, he does temporarily relieve pressure from the lock, but it's not a long-term solution to the problem because ultimately you're just, uh, you're just changing where you get finished, right? Instead of getting finished in this knee down situation, the heel's going down. So the heel becomes the potential point of contact with the mat and you get, you get finished regardless. Now, if he back steps, the trick is he is going into the pressure of the lock. So there's a level of like risk here. Right? But if he goes, so, so back step. If he goes back fast enough and he's aggressively passing my feet to the other side, he has that opportunity now because my legs, so again, right, we don't want the guy's legs in front of us. If, if my legs are in front of him as the defensive man, he doesn't have any ability now to hand fight and toe slip. Whereas if my feet are here, he can come forward and he can start hand fighting and looking to toe slip. Okay, so come back. So, so if you guys remember uh, BJ Penn versus Ryan Hall, BJ backstepped, and a lot of people were, like, were criticizing him for that and saying it was the wrong move. It was actually the right move. The problem was it was just a little too, uh, little too late. The trick is, guys, this is a very bad position. There's a reason why people like this position so much. It's because it's so strong. And at this point, like, you may not be able to get out. But your best bet of getting out is backstepping and coming forward, come forward, come forward, and keep the legs on this side. So now he can come forward and he can hand fight and he can get out of the, uh, the, the, bad, the bad situation, right? By toe slipping and such, right? So basically the goal is get out of a backside 50-50 and try to get into a double seated 50-50 where you can come forward. If you roll, the guy's gonna put his legs to the other side every single time, all right? Um, let's look at, so put me in a K-guard. This is, this is especially true for when we get put, uh, yeah, go through a full sequence. This is especially true for whenever we get put into a backside 50-50 and our leg is on the bottom, okay? What you should not do in this situation is try to run. If I try to run, he puts his foot to the front of my far hip, now he passes the leg to the top side and he exposes my heel. Terrible, right? Again, if he does that, catch the heel. We can try to back step, pass the legs over there and come forward, but you're also running the risk of just getting finished because he's got you in like one of the worst possible situations. So when I'm here, if the leg is on the bottom side, what we want to do right away before he even has the opportunity to pass the leg to the top side, so pass the leg to the top side once more. Again, that's what he's looking for, right? Now he can expose the heel very, very easily. So put it back on the bottom side. When I'm here, right now, what puts this heel into a vulnerable position where it can be exposed is the pressure Pete's able to apply to the back of my knee, right? When I go to extend this leg, I can't. It runs into his leg. So I back step, and when I back step, what happens is I have relieved pressure from the back of my knee. Okay, he's not, he's not putting pressure to the back of my knee anymore, all right? And now here we're in a double seated 50-50 position, and we can start doing all the things we looked at before to get out of the situation, all right? So, um, you may not be able to get out of this position every time you get put into it because it is it's very, very strong, okay? But backstepping uh, and coming forward is your best bet. And that's true whether he's got your heel or not. If he's got your heel, it's just, your odds of success are obviously gonna go down because he already has this submission in place. But still remember, backstepping and coming forward is your best bet. So now let's get into this specific fight, which so many people uh, have debated endlessly. Okay, so before we do anything else, let's just look at the sequence. I'm sure most of you guys have seen it, but for those of you that maybe haven't, let's just watch it one time all the way through. And then Penn got finished. All right, let's break that down piece by piece. So it starts off with, this is not an Imanari roll. Okay, it's a, you can call it a Ryan Hall roll. An Imanari roll would involve Ryan's uh, right leg stepping to the outside, 
okay? And then <clears throat> his uh, his left hand, sorry, his right hand gripping behind the knee, spin into a cross ashi. This involves the left hand, okay, and the left leg chopping over the top, enter into a backside. So again, an Imanari roll would be the opposite. Imanari roll would be uh, right hand, right leg. Ryan Hall roll is left hand, left leg. Okay, so enter into a backside 50-50. Now, there's two main variations of backside 50-50 uh, from the perspective of the offensive man. You're either going to have your elbow on top of the guy's lower leg or underneath. That's very, very key. Okay, why is that? Because if it's on top, you can immediately gain heel exposure. The reason why the backside 50-50 is so strong uh, for, for gaining heel exposure is that what it does is it puts pressure to the back of the uh, your opponent's knee. What that does is it lifts his heel off the mat. Okay, If I can put my foot flat on the mat, I can keep it flat on the mat. This is one possible way to defend against having my heel exposed. right? So for instance, let's say you have a bottom cross ashi on somebody. Okay, um, If they keep their foot flat on the mat, you are, you're not going to be able to expose their heel. Okay, and then a bottom cross ashi, you don't really have a good mechanism for getting the foot off the mat. Okay, here because you can put pressure to the back of the guy's knee, you can take. Well, here and tried to run away, which is not the right move. But regardless, even if he hadn't, the pressure to the back of the knee that's going to bring the heel off the mat, right? So what it does is it it pushes the knee forward, and as the knee comes forward, the heel comes off the mat, right? The toes will stay on the mat, but it doesn't matter. When the heel comes off the mat, you can gain heel exposure, okay? Now, um, let's look at another match. Okay, so let's look at here, Lachlan Giles versus Muhammad Ali at ADCC. Again, obviously, I'm sure most of you guys have seen this one, uh, but let's watch this and then compare this to the BJ Penn uh, Ryan Hall fight. Okay, so in both fights, uh, the defensive man got finished, but there's two key differences. The first one is that when Lachlan enters the backside 50-50, it's, it's a bit hard to see because of the angle, uh, but because it's a K-guard entry, all right, his elbow is not in a position to immediately gain heel exposure. Okay, the leg's on the bottom side. Muhammad's right leg, his lower leg is on the bottom side, okay? It's not on the top, so it's... Uh, uh, in this case, Lachlan's right arm can't immediately gain heel exposure, right? Contrast that with uh, in the Penn Hall fight. Right there. See, it was, he could immediately gain heel exposure as soon as he landed in the position. That's very, very key, right? The second thing is the defensive reaction. Muhammad rolls. See what he's going to do? He's going to come like basically towards the camera. First, he tries to move back into him, but it, it doesn't work. Now he rolls, okay? Not a good move. Anytime you roll, you give the guy with the backside 50 50, okay, Lachlan here, the opportunity to throw his legs to the other side and gain an outside Senkaku. Okay, right there, he's got an outside Senkaku. And it's very, very strong breaking position, all right? Anytime you roll, they have a chance to do that. Now, you can still do that on a back step uh, uh, when the defensive man back steps, but it's, it's more difficult, okay? So let's look at uh, Penn's defensive reaction here. He gets his heel caught. Instead of rolling, he's going to backstep. Okay? And ultimately, he, he still gets finished, right? So the question is, uh, which of these two defenses is correct, right? Which which is the better one, all right? Um, you can have success with both, but I'm going to argue in this video, ultimately, the backstep is the stronger defense. Even though it didn't work out for Penn there, it's probably the one you're going to have more success uh, success with in the uh, the long run. All right. So here's a video of me rolling in the black basement. I'm going to enter into a backside 50/50. Take note how, of how my arm is on the top side, so I gain heel exposure immediately. Now my training partner he does the same thing Muhammad Ali did. He rolled. Okay. Now there's one difference between this and the Muhammad Ali Lachlan match. Here. It starts on the bottom side, Lachlan passes the leg to the top side, okay, and then he gains heel exposure, okay? So as soon as Lachlan entered into the backside 50-50, because it's a backside 50-50 with the leg on bottom, he's got to pass it to the top to ultimately gain heel exposure. That means there's a window 
where his heel is not immediately being exposed. His legs in a position to uh, have his heel be exposed, but because the legs are not on the top side, his upper leg, I should say, but because his lower leg is not on the top side, he can't be exposed immediately. So in that window, I would argue you always should backstep 100% of the time. Okay, um, I'm not going to show this match, but if you go and watch Gordon versus Lachlan, that's what Gordon does when Lachlan gets him in the backside 50-50. Again, it's it's with the, the leg, lower leg on the bottom side. Okay, Typically, when you enter from outside positioning, so like K-guard, things like that, you will enter into backside 50-50 with the, the leg on the bottom side, Okay, meaning that there's a window for the guy to backstep. So, for instance, if we look to... So we're going to go through all these, these uh, matches. All right, so this is... Uh, a role with a training partner of mine named Alex. So I'm going to spin under. Now, right away, he backsteps. You see that? Even though I was in a position where my arm was actually on the inside, it's even more dire for him, but he recognizes it right away and he backsteps. It would have been even harder for me to stop that if my leg, or rather my arm was on the other side, right? I wouldn't be able to gain heel exposure if my arm was on the other side. So that's what Muhammad could have done. So if you're in a situation where you're in a backside 50-50 and the, the legs on the, the lower side, it's a no-brainer. You should be backstepping like 100% of the time because if you do, what's going to happen? You're going to backstep and you're going to uh, you're no longer going to have pressure to the back of your knee. You're going to be in a double seated 50-50. You won't have your heel exposed. You can start defending there and look to escape from that position. Whereas here, if you try to run away, both Muhammad and Lock, uh, Muhammad and Penn first initially tried that, right? So Penn not there. His first instinct is to try to run away. See if Clark tries to run away, right? See that that pull that happened right there? Right here. See that? He's trying to run away, but it's really difficult to get your knee outside of the offensive man's knee line because he has outside positioning on you. It's a, it's a difficult thing to do. Um, imagine if you have like a, like, a, like a solid grip on somebody's leg, uh, a single leg takedown with your arms, right? Your arms are outside ultimately. It's pretty hard to pull straight out of that right similar thing with the legs here okay so um so you sh if the legs on the, the bottom side always back step it's a no-brainer the trickier thing then is what do we do when it's on the top side all right so i would still argue that you ultimately should back step if you can okay now uh, here's just another example of the arm you know my arms on the top side here right and i catch the heel right away Okay, this is just one more example of uh, entering into a backside 50-50 with the arm on the top side. So I gain heel exposure right away. Now look, this time my opponent is going to roll. And I see how I immediately throw my legs to the other side and I gain an outside Senkaku. If you have an outside Senkaku with heel exposure, man, it's, it, it's a very difficult thing to escape from here. Now, what you'd prefer to be the case, okay, is that the legs are on this side of the body, okay? For instance, like a regular 50-50. So in this match, where Masakazu Minari went against Joachim Hansen, so Minari is at first in a bottom 50-50, going to invert and enter into a backside 50-50. And you see how uh, Iminari's leg extends here. Okay, It's hooking around this hip. Usually it would be around the other hip, because here there is a counter inside heel hook Hansen could go for, but... Um, to be honest, even I probably knew that he had better leg locks than anybody else at this time, so I guess he wasn't super worried about that. This is a very strong hook, it's just that counter is there. Regardless, anyway, so even is able to extend this leg, and as the leg straightens, there's pressure to the back of Hansen's knee, which is going to bring his heel off the mat, which is exactly what happened, right? Now the question is, what should Hansen do in this situation? Should he roll, or should he backstep? Accept, okay. So right here, he bring his knee underneath and roll this way, giving Imanari a window to throw his legs to outside Senkaku. And Hansen never really has a chance to hand fight or, or do any defenses. Or he backstep, okay. He accepts, and here he's able. To start see uh, Imanari trying to get his leg over here, create an obstacle uh, in between himself and, and Hansen. But Hansen's doing a good job here of straightening his leg out so it's harder to break, pushing here. And ultimately, he, at this point, the reason he spun that back that way, if you look at his knee, 
almost out of the knee line, so the putting pressure is, is pretty much gone. Okay, and right now he's just focused on putting his knee laterally from the knee line. All right, it started with the back step, which precipitated the rest of his defense. So here, he gets his heel caught in a back step. He rolled. All right, take a look at Minari's left leg. Over here, he's trying to get an outside Senkaku. I don't think Imanari back then would have called this an outside Senkaku, but it's pretty clearly what he's doing with this uh, left leg here. Okay, Had he rolled, Hansen that is, there's almost no way he would have been able to stop Imanari's leg from coming over the top just like mine did here. Right? So here my opponent, he doesn't backstep. To be honest, this is pretty deep. It would have been really The angle here, it would have been pretty difficult to backstep because of the nature of the entry, but regardless... He, he does, you know, roll, which is basically all he could have done there. Throw my legs to the other side. Now, because of the back step, uh, Hansen back steps here. He has now. There's not a fluid roll for Imanari to just throw his legs to the other side and gain a back, uh, a um, an outside Zenkaku. He's got to open up his legs and throw them to the other side, right? He's got to take his legs and throw them over here. That gives Hansen time, okay, to start defending. We can't really see it because of the angle, the angle rather. But what I'm pretty sure is happening here is that Hansen is extending his leg. And what we can see clearly is that he's pushing at this leg. Okay. Typically, if you're trying to break somebody's leg with a heel hook, you don't want a fully extended leg, right? That would be more of a knee bar. Ideally, what you want is a good bend in the leg. Okay. So if you can extend your leg, oftentimes that will relieve breaking pressure. Not always. You can still get broken there, but it, it's a it's a good thing you can do to potentially relieve some of the pressure. Okay. What is certain uh, is that Hansen here is addressing this leg. Okay. You know, he's he's not allowing even already to keep his leg over here. Right? By contrast, oops. My opponent here doesn't have the ability to do that. If he backstepped, I'd have to throw my legs to the other side. Because he rolls, then just fall to the other side. And there's there's never that window of defensive opportunity. Guys, I'm not gonna lie, it's not a big window. Most of the time you're gonna get finished. It's pretty fucking hard even if you backstep. Okay, we're gonna talk a little bit more uh, about that later on. But it's probably your best bet. It's not, it's not a good chance, but there's a reason people play back side 50-50 because it works. Okay, so when we're dealing with defense, we always have to understand it's not, guys, you, you're never going to have a back side 50-50 defense that works 100% of the time. We're just trying to find the best case scenario here. Okay, we recognize it's a pretty shitty situation. You're, what you should do altogether is just not allow it to happen. We're going to talk about that next. Um, but if it does happen, this is probably your best bet. So one more time, Hunter does a really good job here. Another thing Hansen could have done, he didn't he didn't do this. Hansen focused on freeing his knee laterally. He relieves breaking pressure. That's the first thing he did. And then he focused on uh, uh, freeing his knee laterally. Okay. What you also could do is you could throw his legs to this side. So get a 50-50, come forward, and hand fight to toe or heel slip. Okay. In that case, as long as you can crowd the guy, right, as long as you can get pretty close to him with your chest to his chest and you can hand fight, it's hard for him to finish you with the heel hook. Uh, and uh, because of the close um, uh, distance between your chests, it's hard for him to get his legs to the other side to get an outside Senkaku. A big part of why the outside Senkaku is so good is because it allows you to use your foot. Actually, you can probably see it better in the Lachlan one. Right here, Lachlan's uh, right foot is acting as a barrier between Muhammad's chest Lachlan's chest. Okay, also the angle of his hips. But if they were both seated here, it would be this foot that would be doing most of the work, keeping their chest separate. Okay, so in a double seated 50 50, that's just simply not the case. You don't have this foot here acting as a barrier between the two of you. Okay, you can come forward, you can hand fight. You can still get finished, but you can come forward and hand fight. Now, let's look at um, this fight that I had in Austin, Texas, and the BJ Penn. A Ryan Hall fight. And let's talk about why did the finishes still happen even though they backstep? He backsteps here, I still get the finish, right? And obviously, same thing with Ryan Hall and uh, BJ Penn. All right, so BJ does the backstep, but he doesn't do it fast enough. This is, you have a very small window of opportunity, okay? Take a look at the direction of Ryan's knees. They're pointing towards the camera. Now look where they're pointing. They're pointing towards the mat. Ryan's goal, 
the offensive man, okay, knowing the back step is coming, is going to be to turn his body, uh, like, basically towards the camera such that his knees face the mat. So now you you just get broken when you back step. It's just too late. It's like, at this point, it's like, imagine if somebody's got your back and they've got a rear strangle in. You're fucked, guys. <laughs> There's not much you can do, you know? If you roll, you're going to relieve pressure temporarily, but if he's good, which Ryan is, he's just going to throw his legs through an outside some cockpit, so it doesn't matter. Your best bet is before the guy has a chance to turn his knees out of the mat, back step, throw his legs to a 50-50. In that case, there's no barrier between your upper body and his upper body. You can come forward and hand fight or, or do other things. You can do what Hansen did, which is extend the leg and open up his legs. Uh, another good example of that is Eddie Cummings versus William Wolk. If you look at the second heel hook that Eddie attempted on William, William did not focus on toe slipping or heel slipping. Instead, he focused on obstructing Eddie's Ashikurabi. So he opened up the legs and allowed him to free his knee laterally from Eddie's knee line, okay? Similar thing as to what Hansen did to uh, Yuminari, all right? So here, this is where you gotta act. You don't have the time. Paul did a really good job here. He's holding onto this leg. So he held it in place for a second, so he couldn't back step. Then as soon as he lets go of the leg, he connects his hands, turns his knees down to the mat. That's when Penn back steps, and it was too little too late. So Penn knew what to do, but it was just too little too late. It's a very similar thing to my match in Austin, Texas here. This is a, this guy's a good grappler. He knows I'm sure what, how, how to defend against a backside 50. But I cut him off too fast and I'm turning my knees down to the mat. So it's too little, too late. Okay, so he's back stepping in an attempt to keep my legs here, come for a hand fight. But because I turned my knees down to the mat, it's too little, too late. At that point, it's checkmate, guys. Okay, now let's talk about one last um, defensive strategy that Penn potentially could have employed. Okay, remember, um, there's a big distinction between backside 50-50 where we have the heel on the top side and where we have the heel on the bottom side. Okay, if the heel's on the bottom side, I think you should always back step, guys. You're going to land in the backside 50-50. Uh, sorry, you're going to land in the double CV 50-50. There's not going to be pressure on your knee anymore. Therefore, you're going to be able to hide the heel, cross your legs, do all sorts of things defensively. And then you can look to escape the position and uh, possibly get back on top if that's your goal. Okay. However, if the leg's on the top side, uh, I would still back step most of the time unless you can keep the foot flat on the mat, okay? Now, it's hard a lot of the time because the way the backside 50-50 works, again, remember, is it puts pressure to the back of the knee that lifts the heel off the mat that allows you to gain heel exposure. But if you can keep the heel on the mat, you can keep the full foot on the mat, you don't, you don't have to back step. What you can do is you can start pushing down his legs and freeing your knee from his knee line while you're still standing and just pull your leg out, all right? So let's look at Alex. Uh, again, guys, this is my training partner, Alex. Let's look at him defending in this fashion. So I spin. Now, I'm trying to put pressure to the back of his knees, but what he's doing is he's grabbing my legs. In this case, he's only grabbing one of my legs. He's grabbing my leg with his hands, and he's pushing down. Okay, I want this foot either at the front of this hip or locked in a 50-50. Those two different configurations of my legs are going to allow me to put pressure to the back of his knee such that then I can start uh, pushing his knee forward and lifting the heel off the mat. But look what happens here. Because he's pushing down on my legs and he keeps that foot flat on the mat, I can't expose his heel. All right. So look at it one more time. He actually does lift it here, but he lifts it in such a way that basically he's just hiding his heel. Okay. Uh, the, the, the main issue is his heel coming off the mat. Interestingly, he brings his toes off the mat, he's fine, right? So you don't actually need to keep the full foot on the mat. You just got to keep your heel on the mat, right? So one more time. Take a look at how he's using his hands. This is actually very interesting in the sense that what Alex did here is the standing version of what Hansen ultimately did to Imanari, right? So Hansen backstepped and immediately started obstructing the entanglement. Okay, that's what Alex did here, except he kept his foot flat on the mat. If you can do this one, this is, this is what I would ultimately... Uh, recommend you doing above anything else, okay? Uh, because you're gonna stay upright, okay? So Alex pushes it down on my legs here, keeps the heel down on the mat, and he gets himself out of a backside 50-50, okay? Above anything else, that's what I would recommend doing. So just to recap, let's go through things, guys. You've got backside 50-50 where the heel's on the top side or on the bottom side. But on the bottom side, there's no reason for you not to back step, except for the fact that you're gonna put your hips on the mat, but both your hips are gonna be on the mat. So I would recommend backstep and get good at escaping the 
double seed to 50 50 and get back on top. That's probably the overall safest strategy there. That's what Gordon did to Lachlan. If you guys want to recap that match, uh, Gordon did that to Lachlan. And in my mind, that's the overall safest, most conservative strategy for dealing with that variation of backside 50 50. Now, if the heel's on the top side and you, the guy catches your heel immediately, uh, it's a little bit more complicated. Okay, first thing first, try to keep your heel flat on the mat, obstruct what he's doing with his legs so he can't lift your heel off the mat to gain uh, uh, pressure to the back of your knee, pushing it forward so that he can catch your heel, okay? But what do, you, what do you do if he does do that? Well, if he does do that, in my opinion, next best thing, you gotta act fast. You gotta back step before he turns his knees down to the mat because once those knees are turned out of the mat, it's tough. You're probably going to get broken. All right. So you got to, or, or hopefully you're going to tap. <laughs> okay. So you got to back step. If you can back step, throw his legs to the side of the 50 50. So you've got like a, a true 50 50. Come forward, hand fight, or obstruct his entanglement with your hands. Those are your options. So again, guys, don't think that you're ever going to find a very, very high percentage backside 50 50 defense, especially in situations where the heel is on the top side. There's a reason this position is so strong. Uh, or rather, I should say, there's a reason this position is so widely used. It's because it's very strong. So, yeah, we're just trying to stack the odds ever so slightly in our favor. So, I hope this uh, video was it helped make sense of what happened in the Ryan Hall BJ Penn fight. My motivation for making it largely stems from like I'm just tired of blue belts constantly shitting on BJ and saying he did the wrong thing. Like it's a very nuanced position. Ultimately, BJ, in my opinion, didn't do the wrong thing. He did the right thing. He just didn't do it fast enough. So he got finished. You know, sometimes that's what happens at a high level. So <laughs> yeah, anyway, but I hope you found it interesting. And if you want to see more stuff on leg lock defense, I've got a full instructional on it on my website, robertdeaglebjjonline.com.